What's going on guys? It's Ben here and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go to Aston Villa versus Brentford. It's going to be a really super tight game today. It's 4th versus 5th. My prediction here is going to be 2-1 Villa. I think Brentford will score and will come back from behind because we seem to be quite good at that recently. But yeah. <laughs>
incredible. Oh my. So we are back after Brentford versus Aston Villa. I can't, you can't be disappointed with the points at the end of the day, but I think we could have had three points. I think if Codra had put that volley away, what happened is actually he hit the ball too cleanly. If he'd have put a little bit of a slice on it, almost anywhere other than at the keeper, uh, there's the equaliser with 20 minutes to go. The momentum's our way. We could have gone on and found a winner like we did against Wigan. But hey ho, um, there's been a huge debate going on since this game, really, on social media. If you listen to the radio, uh, BBC, WM, and whatever, what is with Yedinak? And why is Bruce playing him at centre back? For me, I've thought of a formation that I think we could play, but um, you know it, it's flexible with Balassi potentially coming in, uh, Abraham potentially coming in for us. Uh, it's flexible. Um, so what what I think we should do is play uh, Nyland in goal and then have Twanzebe, Chester, Hutton, or sla slash Elphick, Hutton, Chester, Twanzebe. Or play um, Yedinak or Whelan in defensive midfield. So play the three at the back, Twanzebe, Chester, Hutton. Then play Whelan or Yedinak, depending on who Bruce likes more. To be fair, I don't see why. Um, Whelan's one of them players that I think you only notice he's not there. You only notice like uh, how good he is until he's like not on the pitch. Because for me, Whelan was so crucial in starting chances. Because he was just so tidy today. Didn't really give the ball away. There were a few situations where he made the wrong pass. If he'd have played it forwards instead of turning backwards. Uh, but, you know, it happened. So we have the three at the back. Then, um, El then uh, Whelan or Ye Yedinak there. And then we play McGinn and Grealish. And they're both going to start sort of moving towards the wings. Uh, I love McGinn. I think M McGinn's a cracking player. I liked how he played against uh, Brentford. I liked how he played against Wigan. Uh, but, you know, I th as long as he doesn't get hurt, it's my priority. We need to keep him fit because if he gets hurt, that's a key part missing. We're going to have to put Hurahan in there. Hurahan hasn't got a start uh, since Yeovil. Um, so I don't know how I feel about that. And then we play two on sort of like wing players. So we'd have El Ghazi or El Mohamedi. We'd have Adoma or Balassi potentially when he comes in, um, like on the wings. And then we have Kodja and Abraham or Kodja and... Uh, Adoma or Kodja and Hogan when he's back or Kodja and Davis when he's back because for me Kodja plays really well as sort of a, a target man he plays one twos now in this game it doesn't really reflect that much because it was a brilliant uh, sort of on his own goal but if you watch the game against Wigan you'd know that he isn't you know, he, he wasn't confident in taking players on. This game, I really liked his confidence. He wanted, you know, he was looking his defender in the eyes. He was taking him one way, he was taking him the other. Uh, and when he knew he wasn't going to get round, he looked to try and play a 1-2 in the Doma. So I thought Codger played really well today. But I think if we put someone alongside Codger, the 1-2 players, and his, his finishing is so good, we just need to get him into a position where he can put the finish in. But, you know. Uh, and then, you know, so I think that, that team, for me would work um this the team that we're playing um, um there's nothing wrong with it because we haven't lost a game yet until we lose a game then we can start nitpicking where we're going wrong in the game but until then two home games now two late equalizers slash winners um so yeah at the end of the day the referee was poor today i'm gonna say that i was gonna say it for wigan but we won so we don't want to complain but the referee was poor today i thought we could have we could have easily had a penalty in the first half now. Obviously, when you're at the game, you don't get the clearest view of stuff. But from what I saw, uh, it was obstruction outside or and inside the box. And then he stuck his leg and knee out and tripped to Doma. So for me, that's a penalty. And for what I think should happen as well is if the referee doesn't feel this is a penalty, obviously. So what the referee should do is book a Doma for diving. Because obviously the referee feels there is not enough contact or a Doma has dived here. And I guarantee you, if the player was booked for it, referees would be a lot more lenient with penalties because they just don't give them. They they look for blatant, obvious two foot from behind in the box or elbow or something. But they look at challenges like that where it's, you know, just little arms. Or, VAR was brilliant at it for the World Cup. Nitpicking on corners and things like that. 
But I just don't... I think the referees just don't give penalties enough for me. But, you know... Um, Yedinak, oh, I don't know how they... He shouldn't play centre-back, end of story. Yedinak playing centre-back, you're asking for trouble. Yedinak, the way he was playing, if you watched closely, you'd see some of his headers. He was winning the header almost every time, but it was either going straight up or forwards and backwards. Now, what he's used to is playing defensive midfield, doing that and having a defender behind to clean up. But when he's on his own at the back, he doesn't have the support behind him. He thrives with support behind him. End of story, because... If when he's but you'll know the way he plays, he plays as if there's another defender behind him to clean up for him. Chester was brilliant today at cleaning up for Yedinak because the amount of miss headers Yedinak made and Chester had to cut across uh, and stick a foot in, you know, and he, he wasn't afraid to go in either, which is what I liked from Chester. But no, I think overall there's improvements to be made for Villa, but it it looks good, and I think when when we make those improvements, when we play full strength. I think we could be a real threat this year, you know. Um, and that's not just the Villa fan inside of me. If you look at the table, we're, f we're fifth by goal difference, you know. One win takes a stop. And as long as we can stay there and slowly shorten the gap, because at the moment it's two points, we can shorten that gap to one point, you know, I think... Just gradually, you know, keep picking up draws, keep picking up wins, pick up points in the big games against Middlesbrough, Leeds and that who are going to be the top threats this year. We pick up points against them. We pick up the point. It's crucial now that we bounce from this win, from this draw, sorry, into a good win against Reading. We beat Reading, we're, we're setting ourselves up for success for me. But I think that might just wrap it up for today's video. It's getting really long and it was just, oh, mixed emotions, really. We, we could have won, but we got the draw and... The looks on the Brentford players and fans' faces was priceless. Absolutely priceless. So, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll hopefully see you at the next one. Up the villa.